His Holiness, Bhakti Vigna Vinashak, Narsingh Swami Maharaj Ki. We welcome His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinashak, Narsingh Swami Maharaj. So, hope everybody knows about Maharaj. Right? Okay. So, Kaujan Bangali Rachan, Maharaj Ke Swagat Devar Jannu, Ki Ki Korte Hove To? Haan. Haridwani Ulagbe. Haridwani Uludwani. Maharaj Ekhon Dhamvasi Hoi Gye Chhe. To Bangla Anuvatta Hoch Chhe, FM E. Aapnara Sunte Paat Chhen, Aasha Kori. Hindi log kitne log hai yaha par? Okay. Okay. To Hindi log ko abhi samaj mein aara hai ya translation sun raha hai kya? Koi sun raha hai kya? Translation ho raha hai kya? Okay. Chinese log aage kya? Chinese translation? No. How many Chinese devotees are here? Okay. So no need. Mataji, Russian translation is going on Mataji? Okay, on which uh, uh, 95, Russian translation is going on 95 FM, okay? <laughs> okay, Hindi 92 or Bangla 94, what is it? 94, okay, so we welcome to Maharaj. And Maharaj is going to speak on uh, Lord Chaitanya and his devotees. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabala Ba Kirid Bharatari Gopi Janabala Ba Kirid Bharatari Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranjana Yamuna Thira Vanachari Yamuna Thira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabala Bhai 
आखिर पर गोपी चन बाला भागिर पर यशोद नंदन ब्रज चन रंजन यशोद नंदन ब्रज चन रंजन या मुना थेरा वन या मन थेरा वन चाहरी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 
Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Sarasati Deve Goravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're going to speak about the associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Previously, I was always speaking more specifically about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but I thought this year I'd like to glorify the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because it's, it's very important for us to appreciate the devotees and not just bypass the devotees and go to the Supreme Lord. We all know the importance of the connection with the devotees, right? By the mercy of the devotees, we get the mercy of Krishna. And without the mercy of the devotees, then it's very difficult to make spiritual advancement. And Lord Krishna also spoke to Uddhava that if someone said he is my devotee, he's not really my devotee. But if he is the devotee of my devotees, then he is my devotee. It's very important for us, therefore, to have a deep appreciation for the devotees of the Lord. The devotees of the Lord are even more merciful than the Lord himself. The Lord, Lord Krishna, rarely gives mercy, 
But the devotees are very kind, very more merciful than Krishna himself. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, we say he's the most merciful of the incarnations of Krishna. But we know that it is Lord Nityananda who is even more merciful. And it is the devotees of Lord Chaitanya who are even more merciful than Lord Chaitanya. Because they distribute the mercy of Lord Chaitanya everywhere. So in speaking glorification of the devotees, I hope it will enrich all of our faith in the devotees of the Lord. To have faith only in the Lord and not to have faith in the devotees will be very bad. We say, yasya deve para bhaktir yata deve takaguru. Tashyati praktahyata prakashanti mahatmana. Only to those souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the devotees are all the purports to the scriptures revealed very easily. So we have to have faith both in Krishna and in Krishna's devotees. So it's important for us, therefore, to hear about different devotees. And we all know from the Vaishnava calendar, we celebrate the appearance and the disappearance of so many different devotees in the course of the year. But not, not all devotees are known. There are many devotees, we don't know when they were born. We don't know when they disappeared. We don't know where they were born or who were their parents. There's not always information available about all of these things. So it's important for us to try to understand more and hear more about different devotees and their wonderful qualities. And Srila Prabhupada's uh, spiritual master, Om Vishnupad, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur, he researched a lot of these things and made a lot of notes. When he was traveling in different parts of India, he would collect information not only about devotees within our own line, but even in the other lines from Ramanujacharya and Madhvacharya, these different sampradayas, he was bringing information for all the devotees. We want to develop strong faith, and the faith comes about by hearing and by knowledge, if we have a good knowledge, a good understanding, then we will have strong faith. So it's important for us to know about the different devotees. So I, I'm going to begin today by speaking about one devotee who was prominent in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I'm going to speak about Shivananda Sain. Shivananda Sain was very intimately connected with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and very much loved by the Lord. He was a very magnanimous personality. He was very responsible also he was a family man. He had three sons. One son was called Chaitanya Das. One son was called Ram Das. And the other son was called Puri Das. At least Lord Chaitanya jokingly 
gave him the name Puri Das. It happened that one time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw that Shivananda Sen's wife was carrying a child in her womb. She had not yet given birth. So when Lord Chaitanya saw that she was expecting to deliver a child, Lord Chaitanya said at that time, he said, when the child is born, you can give him the name Puri Das. It, it was joking. Actually, he was given the name Para, Pur, Paramananda, but then sometimes he was called Puri Das. And later on, he grew up to become a very, very great devotee. He became known as Kavi Karnapur. Kavi Karnapur. And he wrote the Gora Gonadesh Dipika, describing or revealing to us the identity of different devotees who were in Gora Lila and who they were in Krishna Lila. So it's very valuable common book. And he, he wrote also other books like uh, a drama, Chaitanya, Charitam, Ch Chaitanya Chandradoya, like that, wonderful books. And the eldest son, Chaitanya Das, he also wrote books. He was a, a Sanskrit scholar. So you can see being born in a devotee family, it's a very wonderful advantage for cultivating Krishna consciousness. Just last night, actually, I was, we were having kirtan with His Holiness Radha Govinda Maharaj and some other devotees had come to perform kirtan. So one of the devotees, he was a, a young man, and he was playing madanga and playing harmonium and singing so wonderfully, so proficiently. I was so impressed when he played the madanga. And then later on he took to the harmonium and he began singing. And it was so wonderful, kirtan. I was so surprised. And so I'd heard that some devotees are here from Vrindavan and that they're in the 24-hour kirtan. So he told me yet that yes, he said, I just came from Vrindavan and usually I said, he told me I've been staying in Vrindavan for four years and I'm with the kirtan there. But I said, I'm sure you, you didn't just learn this in four years. He said, no, he said, I grew up in New Vrindavan. <laughs> He, he's a Western-bodied young man. He said he grew up, he was born in New Vrindavan, and he grew up there in New Vrindavan. So, as a young man, he was taught, as a young child, he was taught how to play madanga and harmonium, and he was accustomed to kirtan. So you can see the birth is very, very helpful. Indeed, Srila Prabhupada also told us how his father had him trained to play the madanga when he was a young boy. And he was also playing harmonium, and his harmonium playing was always appreciated. Prabhupada said, there were some young women wanted to marry me because of my harmonium playing. <laughs> Quite interesting. I don't know why they want to marry someone just because they can play harmonium. You're not going to make a lot of money <laughs> just playing harmonium. Anyway, you know, this is... Uh, Prabhupada was telling these things. So, I want you to understand the, the importance of that birth that is such an advantage to becoming a devotee, to have such a nice birth in a devotee family and to be raised in Krishna consciousness and to be taught kirtan from one's childhood. It's so wonderful. And not everybody, of course, will be musically inclined. Like I said, Shivananda Saint's children 
One was a Sanskrit scholar and the other was devotee. He, Kavi Karnapur, well, they were all devotees, but, uh, you know, they were more inclined to the philosophy and they wrote wonderful books, so made a nice contribution to the literary legacy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. So Shivananda Sain was quite wealthy man and he was sensible and responsible. Lord Chaitanya had another disciple named, well, another follower, there was a devotee named Vasudev Datta. And Vasudev Datta was very, a very generous person. He would give away practically everything he had. You know, anybody could come to him and they could ask, and if he had it, he would give them. He, would, he wouldn't think about his own family. Vasudev Dada had his own family, but he wouldn't think about his own family needs if somebody else came to him requesting financial support or help, he would immediately give them. So Lord Chaitanya became a concern for this and he told Shivananda Sain, he said, you should be the, the secretary for Vasudev Datta. Take care of his finances because he's so philanthropic, he's so charitable that he gives away everything. So he said, you take care of his wealth for him and don't let him be irresponsible. So this is example of devotee care. We often speak about devotee care in our going on in our movement today. There's move, you know, we encourage our centers to try to have devotee care departments and to be thinking about the needs of devotees and looking after them and caring for them. And we see this again and again in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just as we saw with Srila Prabhupada, how caring he was about devotees. If he saw that devotees, sometimes he would see a devotee, has got some boil, Prabhupada would tell him how to treat it, what he needs to do. And sometimes even Prabhupada saw the devotee needed to get married and Prabhupada would arrange for their marriage. So Prabhupada was thinking about the care of devotees and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was also very caring and concerned for all of his devotees. It's very important for us as devotees, we have to also want to cultivate these kind of qualities that as devotees, we should also want to show the proper behavior of the devotee and exhibit the qualities which are there. Whatever qualities Lord Krishna has, the vast majority of these qualities are also found there within devotees, right? In, the, in Rupa Goswami's uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he had listed all uh, uh, six, 64 different qualities of Lord Krishna. Uh, but then he had explained that up to a jiva, up to, up to Lord Brahma, that they can at the best, they can have 50 out of the 64 qualities. And they won't have the qualities in the same quantity but the quality should be there, although not in the same quality as, dis as displayed by Lord Krishna. So we want to cultivate the good qualities. One who is a devotee of Krishna will naturally have all good qualities. But it will take some time for us to manifest these qualities. 
So it's very good for us to hear about the qualities which are found there in Chaitanya Prabhu and his devotees. So Shivananda saying he was given the responsibility by Lord Chaitanya. You look after the finances of Vasudev Datta. Don't let him just give his money away to everybody. Another example of the wonderful qualities of Shivananda came when he would go to Jagannath Puri every year. Lord Chaitanya took sannyas at the age of 24. And then his mother requested him to go and live in Jagannath Puri. And it happened that every year the devotees would come from Mayapur or from Goramandala Bhumi, from the different villages in Goramandala Bhumi, they would come and they would all go together to Jagannath Puri and they would attend the Rathiatra and usually they would stay there for four months because four months, the Chaturmasya, the rainy season comes and four months this and they would stay there for the four months and then at the, after four months they would come back and that, that meant walking uh, we celebrated a few years ago now we celebrated the 500th anniversary of Lord Chaitanya taking sannyas and at that time devotees from Mayapur organized a padiyatra and they all walked to Puri. They walked, well, they went to Shantipur, to the home of Advaita Acharya, and then they went down across to Puri, just as Lord Chaitanya did when he took sannyas. So every year, Shivananda Sain would organize the devotees to go to Jagannath Puri, and he would pay all the expenses involved for them to go to Jagannath Puri. They would have to cross different rivers. So when they would cross the rivers, there would be tolls to pay. And sometimes they would cross also different borders. And that time they would have to deal with the customs. Just like we do, you know, when we travel, it's so troublesome sometimes. You know, we think, oh, it's so troublesome. Even 500 years ago, they had trouble to travel. You know, when we travel, we have all the trouble coming through immigration and coming through the security checks. And they will tell you, no, you can't take this. You know, maybe you bring some prasadam. And they'll say, no, you can't take this in the plane. Or maybe you've got some fresh fruit and they'll say, no, you can't bring this inside the airplane. And, you know, so many troubles. So even 500 years ago, they had a lot of trouble just to go to Jagannath Puri. Nowadays, we don't have much trouble to go to Jagannath Puri. Of course, we come from much farther away. But just to go from Mayapur to Puri, Shivananda Sain would bring the devotees. And there would be quite a number of devotees. And many of the ladies, the wives of the different devotees would also go. And they'd bring children also. Shivananda Sain would bring his sons with him. They would all go together, walking to Puri. So it happened that while they were walking to Puri, one point, a dog began to follow them. And Shivananda says, this dog is following us. So every day he arranged to give prasadam to the dog. But one day they forgot to give prasadam to the dog. And then the dog disappeared. A Shivananda Sen asked what happened to the dog. And then it was, oh, the, oh, we forgot. We never gave prasadam to the dog. Oh, Shivananda Sen felt very sorry 
that they'd never given prasadam to the dog, and the dog had disappeared. He was so concerned for that dog that he fasted. He thought, they didn't give the dog prasadam, I'm not going to take prasadam either. But then, when they got to Jagannath Puri, to their delight, they saw the dog was there. And it was with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya was, he had a coconut, and he was taking the, the meat from inside the coconut, and he would throw it to the dog. And the dog would take the meat and go, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And the dog was chanting Hare Krishna when he got the meat from the coconut. And then the next day the dog was liberated. The dog went back to Godhead. So this was the mercy of Shivananda Singh, that he gave mercy to even a dog. Very compassionate, right? We want to also think about Dog. It doesn't mean we bring the dog in the house, you know. Nowadays people, they, you know, dogs, are, we give them prasadam, but they keep them outside. They're not supposed to come in the house. We keep them out, they don't come into the temple, but we don't deny them prasadam. And certainly when we go on parikrama, on the Navadri parikrama, after we, we always give prasadam to the dogs. There's always enough for the dogs. They enjoy when they see the devotees. So we do try to be compassionate, cultivate this mood of caring. There was a, another important incident which shows the wonderful qualities of Shivananda Sain while he was bringing the devotees to Puri. It happened one day that while they were on the way, they got delayed at a checkpoint. And the government officials were, they spent time with Shivananda saying he had to pay tolls to them. So all the devotees were kept waiting. And all of the devotees includes also Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda himself would also walk to Puri every year to go and see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was manifest for after sannyas. He took sannyas at 24 and then he spent six years. Six years were spent traveling around India and then 18 years were spent in Jagannath Puri. So about 18 times the devotees were coming every year, coming for Rathyatra and going back, coming to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But it happened that at one point when they were crossing the checkpoint, they got delayed. And the devotees were kept standing in the hot sun and there was not much shade there was not much shade from the trees and they had not taken the prasadam so Lord Nityananda was feeling some agitation he was actually portraying the mood like an ordinary person and he showed hunger and some agitation due to his hunger. That they were waiting in the hot sun and Shivananda was not coming. They were delayed. They had no place to stay and they had no prasadam to take. What to do? Lord Nityananda was getting quite annoyed because it was taking so long. And at one point, Lord Nityananda became so annoyed that he said, that Shivananda saying, he said, I curse his three sons to all die. So when Lord Nityananda said like that, then the wife of Shivananda saying began to cry. She was so 
worried that Lord Nityananda has cursed our sons to die. So after a short time, Shivananda Singh returned and he saw his wife crying. So he inquired from her, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And she said, Lord Nityananda has cursed our sons to die. So Shivananda Singh said, if Lord Nityananda wants our sons to die, let us all die. If Lord Nityananda desires, let us all die. And then Lord Nityananda came and he was feeling a little angry towards Shivananda Singh. So he kicked him. He gave him a kick. And how did Shivananda Singh respond when he was kicked? It's very interesting to note. How, did, how would you respond if somebody comes up and kicks you? How are you going to feel? So Shivananda Singh got a kick from Lord Nityananda. And Shivananda Singh said to Lord Nityananda, he said that, oh, today my life is successful. I have achieved the dust from your lotus feet. That dust from your lotus feet is desired by even great demigods like Lord Brahma. They're all desiring to get the dust from your lotus feet. I am so fortunate. You have blessed my family. You've blessed me. My life is successful. You put the dust from your lotus feet on my fallen, contaminated body. And, and when Lord Nityananda heard these words, then he embraced Shivananda Singh. He was so happy to see that Shivananda Singh had such strong faith in Lord Nityananda. And of course, Shivananda Singh immediately took Lord Nityananda and took him to a room, got him a nice accommodation where he could rest, and he arranged also his prasadam and everything for all the devotees. So this is a very, very important pastime, which we should all learn from about tolerance and about being kind and compassionate and not expecting honor for ourselves, offering all respects to others. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna Das Kaviraj also tells us that take that verse from the Shikshastikam. Think of ourself lower than a straw in the street. Be more tolerant than the tree. Be devoid of all sense of false prestige and ready to offer all respects unto others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. So this is a wonderful pastime of Shivananda Singh, which took place. Uh, another pastime which took place with Shivananda Singh came when he brought his sons to Jagannath Puri. And I was telling you how he introduced them to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And there was one time Lord Chaitanya asked the youngest child, this one Puri Das, remember Puri Das who became Kavi Karnapur? So Lord Chaitanya asked him to chant the holy name of the Lord. You know, just like, you know, little children come and we will say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and we want them to respond and chant the holy name. So Lord Chaitanya was urging the little child chant the holy name, Puri Das, but the child was just, <laughs> the child was just, it was not responding, it was not chanting. And Lord Chaitanya expressed his frustration 
to Swarup Damodar, who was his secretary, he said, I have given the holy name to the whole world. He said, I have made all living entities chant the holy name, even immovable living entities, even the animals and the trees, they've all chanted the holy name. I cannot get this little child to chant the holy name. But Swarup Damodar explained to Lord Chaitanya, he said, no, my Lord. He said, actually, you have initiated him in the holy name. And he has taken it in his mind. And he is chanting the holy name within his mind. So you have already initiated him. You don't have to feel any frustration or disappointment that certainly he has taken the holy name and he is now chanting the holy name. And then, a little while later, after that incident, at this time, Puri was then seven years old. He was seven years old only. So Lord Chaitanya said to him, can you recite a verse? Can you recite some poetry for us, Puri Das? And the little child then composed a beautiful verse in Sanskrit describing Lord Krishna. That the, the beauty of Lord, he said, Lord Krishna is like a blue lotus flower, right? The blue lotus, it's the most beautiful. So Lord Krishna is like a blue lotus to the ears. He's like Indranila gems. He's like, the, it, was, it was a beautiful Sanskrit verse, which the little child just composed by himself, spontaneously. Everyone was amazed. So they could understand the future of this child, that when he grows up, certainly he will be very, very good. He'll be scholarly and he can also write and compose nice verses in Sanskrit. Because even as a child, he could do it. Another occasion, Shivananda Singh would invite Lord Chaitanya to come and take meals at his house. It was the custom, Grihastas liked to invite the sannyasis to come for lunch to their home. So sometimes Shivananda Sain would take the opportunity to bring Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his home to take prasada. On one particular occasion, Shivananda Sain had prepared quite heavy prasada. A lot of cakes and sweet rice and different fried things. So Lord Chaitanya, he accepted because Shivananda Singh was his devotee. But at the same time, he found it to be quite heavy food. You want to take light food. It's better to eat light food rather than heavy food. Heavy food will be more difficult to digest. Particularly as we get older, you don't want to be eating heavy food. Prabhupada used to tell us, said, young man cannot eat too much, an old man cannot eat too little. So, Shivananda Sen had brought a lot of very heavy food for Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya accepted it reluctantly. But the son of Shivananda Sen, the, the, the oldest son, Chaitanya Das, he was a very intelligent young man. And he prepared very nice things for Lord Chaitanya to counteract, to help him to digest. He brought lime and ginger and lemon, these different things, which would all help Lord, and also some yogurt, dahi, to cool the stomach, 
So Lord Chaitanya saw that this young man, very intelligent, he's bringing me these nice, these nice things to help me to digest the heavy meal. Actually, there was another pastime also took place here in Mayapur when Shivananda Sen fed Lord Chaitanya. Again, it was a problem that Lord Chaitanya had taken some heavy food. So that time, he went to Marari Gupta and Marari Gupta gave him water from his water pot. Marari Gupta was a physician. So he understood that Lord Chaitanya had some indigestion problem and the cure for indigestion, drink water. And Murari Gupta had a special water pot which he gave to Lord Chaitanya to drink water which cured his indigestion. This is the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his devotees, enjoying the different dealings with them. Sometimes he has to eat, he's invited to their home, sometimes he has to eat. And sometimes when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go to people's home, on, there, there, was, there was one occasion where he got insulted. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was invited to the home of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya had one son-in-law. In other words, this boy had married the daughter of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and they were staying there in their house. So it happened that Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya had prepared a big feast for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You know, you get these big banana leaves and they, they just covered the whole banana leaf with so many different preparations. So this son-in-law of, of, of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he, he saw the, the big feast which was being given to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he said, just look at this. Look, he's supposed to be a sannyasi. Look how he's eating, eating so much. It was offensive, to, to not very nice thing. To, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not even begun to eat. Of course, he didn't desire to eat. He liked to just, he would say, just give me a little sock and some rice, a little green vegetables and some rice, that's good. I'll be happy. But the devotees would want to always give him a feast. And so this, this rascal son-in-law of Sarvabhoma criticized Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So sometimes it happens like that. People come and they're not very nice. Just like Ramachandra Puri came to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he saw in Lord Chaitanya's room at the Gandicha that there were ants moving around on the floor and when Ramachandra Puri saw all the in insects on the floor, he said, look, insects are running here and there everywhere. He said, before I had heard about you people, you, you Vaishnavas, that you Gaudiya Vaishnavas, that you all eat too much. Now I know it's true. That's why all these insects are attracted. They must be keeping sweets here because so many insects are running here and there. Of course, it's the nature of insects that they do come, they run here and there. You cannot avoid that. But this was a criticism of envious people. They talk like this. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took action and he ordered the devotees, from today on I will take one third of what I eat. Reduce my prasadam. All the devotees were pained in their heart to hear how Lord Chaitanya was going to reduce his eating. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is the Mahabhadanaya avatar. 
he is giving great mercy. And it said, anybody who could see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just by seeing him, then they would feel so much love and so much ecstasy, so much awakening of faith in Krishna, just by seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that it gave people even prema bhakti. People could develop prema simply by seeing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But not everybody was so fortunate to be able to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We know Lord Chaitanya was in Jagannath Puri. I said he was staying there for 18 years. What about all the other people? How are they going to get prem? Do they have to go to Jagannath Puri to get the prem? That's one way. That is one way to get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Directly go and see Lord Chaitanya. But there were other ways also because not everyone has so much faith to be willing to walk to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya revealed himself to people in another way. One, the, one way was they saw him directly. Another way was Avesha. Avesha, just like we speak about Shakta Vesha avatars, how people become empowered with a particular energy. So Lord Chaitanya would also give mercy through his Avesha, mercy, through his Avesha form. He would empower certain individuals to act on his behalf. To, he would actually enter their body and empower them to deliver the fallen souls. Uh, Kali Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vininahi Tara Pravartan Right? In order to spread the holy name of the Lord. It's very important that you have to be able to be empowered and what is that empowerment? That is Krishna Shakti. If one is empowered by Lord Krishna, then he can spread the chanting of the holy names to everyone. We want to be empowered. So Lord Chaitanya arranged to empower people. There was this one person called Nakula. Nakula Brahmachari. Nakula was a great devotee, a great pure devotee. And Lord Chaitanya had Lord Chaitanya had entered his body. Sometimes Nakula Brahmachari would be in ecstasy. His just like he would show the different symptoms of Baba, trembling of the body, hair standing on end tears falling from his eyes like torrents of rain, sometimes rolling on the ground, sometimes laughing and sometimes crying, behaving just like a madman. He was empowered. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had entered into his body and people would come to see Nakula to get his mercy. However, not everyone believed that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has entered his body. And Shivananda saying, he also had a doubt. He thought, I don't believe it. I don't think Lord Chaitanya could have entered into the body of this Nakula Brahmachari. Is it really possible that the Lord could have done that? So Nakula Brahmachari was residing there at one place and Shivananda Singh came there and there was a crowd of people all around Nakula and Shivananda Singh kept well back, kept away from everyone and he thought to himself, if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has actually entered in his body, then he will know that I am here. 
because Shivananda Sen was very intimately connected with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very fond of him and he would always encourage him and, and give him association. So Shivananda Sen kept well at the back and there was a whole crowd of people in front of Nakula. Then suddenly Nakula told all the people around him, he said, there's a person here, there's a devotee here called Shivananda Singh. Find him, bring him to me. So all the devotees, they thought, oh, who is this? They didn't know who Shivananda Singh was. So they called out, is Shivananda Singh there? Is somebody called Shivananda Singh there? Shivananda Singh, come. Come, Nakula Brahmachari is calling you, come. And Shivananda Singh came. So he was way at the back, but he thought, they're calling me, I should go. So he came and he thought, Shivananda Singh thought, if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually in his body, then he will know what mantra I chant. He will know what mantra I'm reciting. So Shivananda Singh came forward to Nakula Brahmachari and offered his obeisances to him. And Nakula looked at Shivananda Singh and said, I know you chant the four syllable Gora Mantra, Gora Gopal Mantra. The four syllable Gora Gopal Mantra. There are actually two mantras like that. There is Go O Anga Goranga 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 But there's another four syllable mantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. So the devotees of the Lord, they chant also the four syllable mantra. In this way, Nakula, he took away the doubts of Shivananda Sain and he showed him how the Lord is personally residing in his body. This is the example of somebody who, Avesha, the Lord enters into his body. But there's a third way in which Lord Chaitanya gives his mercy, right? Three ways in which the Lord is giving his mercy. First of all, directly, sakshat, directly seeing Lord Chaitanya and being with him. Secondly, avesha, empowering somebody. And the third thing, Avirbhava. Avirbhav. So the Avirbhav is where Lord Chaitanya appears there in this particular place. So it said, Lord Chaitanya always appeared in the home of Mother Sachi every day. Every day Lord Chaitanya would appear in the home of Mother Sachi and he would accept her offering. Even after he took sannyas, he would come there and to take her offerings because she would cook for the deity and Lord Chaitanya would come in his avirbhav form and accept her offering every day. And then the second place where Lord Chaitanya appears is in the home of Raghava Pandit. Raghava Pandit was a very great devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His home was in Panihati. Have you all been to Panihati? Yes, everybody, you, should, you must go. If you haven't been Panihati, you have to go to Panihati. Not far away from Calcutta, very near, very near to airport. And on the bank of the Ganga is Panihati. Panihati, of course, is the place where 
Raghunath Das got the mercy of Lord Nityananda. We have also an ISKCON temple there today by the mercy of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. He purchased a beautiful property there which is right at that spot. So please, you try to see Panihati. And it said, in Panihati also, there's a house of Raghava Pandit. And Raghava Pandit, he lived there with his sister Damianti. And it said, Lord Chaitanya would also appear there. They were wonderful cooks. They would cook many preparations. And they would they would cook all year and then when it came time to go to Jagannath Puri, they would pack everything in bags. So they had the Raghava jelly. The Raghava jelly was a big sack of prasadam. Big sack. They would cook things and they, they would cook things so well that they would not deteriorate, that they would stay good. Just like they were freshly cooked. Even they'd been cooked months ago, they would stay fresh. So they would bring every year this big sack of prasadam for Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya would keep it at the corner of his room. So Lord Chaitanya, this is one of the places where he appears in the home of Raghava Pandit. And the other place where he appears is where in the home of Srivas. Srivas Angam. Not far away from here, just down the road, near the, up after the yoga path, you keep going and you'll come to the Srivas Angam, the place where Srivas Thakur lived with his family. And Lord Chaitanya would come to the home of Srivas whenever there is Kirtan. Lord Chaitanya enjoys to take part in Kirtan. Just like whenever we Kirtan. We want to, where's the Kirtan? Who's doing the Kirtan? I was telling you we had Kirtan yesterday and I heard the Kirtan and I, I was attracted. Oh, Kirtan. So like that, Lord Chaitanya, even though he would be hundreds of miles away in Jagannath Puri, but if they had Kirtan in the Srivas Angam, Lord Chaitanya, by his mystic power, by his potency of Avir Bhav, he would appear in the home of Srivas Pandit whenever there was Kirtan and take part in that Kirtan. And then the fourth place where Lord Chaitanya manifests himself, that is wherever Lord Nityananda chants and dances. Lord Chaitanya likes to dance with Lord Nityananda. Just like Kituri, uh, Kituri, the, the home of Naratam Das Thakur, where they had the first Gorpurnima festival, Chaitanya appeared, Avir Bhav. Lord Nityananda also appeared. They both manifested themselves for the Kirtan. Similarly, at Panihati, when Raghav, Raghunath arranged a big feast, they were having kirtan. Lord, J Lord Nityananda was there with his associates, but Lord Chaitanya manifested himself, Avir Bhav. By his mystic power, he could appear there to be with Lord Nityananda and to join the kirtan. So Lord Chaitanya manifests himself in these four different places. However, Chaitanya Charitamrita describes to us about one great devotee. His name was Prajumna Mishra, or sometimes he's called Prajumna Brahmachari. He was given the name Nishringananda by Lord Chaitanya himself. He was actually a very great devotee of Lord Nishringadev. And he, would, he used to talk to Lord Nishringadev. And Lord Nishringadev would talk with him. So Lord 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu named him Nisringananda. But sometimes he's also called Pradyumna. So there, there's very nice pastimes are described both in the Majjhilila and in the Anjjhilila of the meditation which was done by Nisringananda. So it happened that uh, there was one case Chaitanya Mahaprabhu well first of all there was there was a case the nephews of Shivananda Sain one nephew had gone there to Jagannath Puri and spent two months with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri and he got a lot of mercy from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so Lord Chaitanya told him he said when you go back when you go back to Mayapur tell all the devotees they don't need to come this year because I'm not I'm coming there I'm going to come there you don't need to come to me I'm going to come to you this year so you don't come to Puri you tell them I'll wait there I'm coming there so the nephew came back to Mayapur and he got back just as the devotees were getting ready to leave to come there and he told them all Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said don't come this year he's coming to us he wants us to wait for him to come so they were waiting and and Lord they were told that he was going to come in the month of Paus which means December January at the end of the year is going to come so they were waiting for that time to come especially Jagadananda and Shivananda they were both very anxious for Lord Chaitanya to come they both love they both love to give service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Jagadananda would cook Lord Chaitanya would eat his cook liked his cooking and Shivananda Sain liked so much to serve prasadam to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so it happened Lord Chaitanya didn't come the time came and Shivananda is sitting there and he's waiting and he's wondering why is Lord Chaitanya not coming where is he be where's he gone why is he not coming he's not coming yet and they were waiting and waiting became anxious and then it happened that Nishringananda came there and Nishringananda saw them looking very worried and he asked them what's wrong why are you so worried you know devotees you should be happy why are you worried and they told him, Lord Chaitanya is supposed to come he didn't come yet so Nishringananda told him don't worry I will bring him so Nishringananda they knew he's a very pure devotee he's very powerful so he said don't worry I will bring him here I will bring so he sat in meditation and then he told them he said Lord Chaitanya has already reached Panihati he will come here after a few days and then he told them after some time he told his Lord Chaitanya will be coming tomorrow they said now you have to prepare the food you have to get everything ready so Shivananda and Jagadananda and Nishringananda they all they got all the different things necessary to cook and they made very nice preparations they were cooking all morning he said by noon Lord Chaitanya would come and they got everything ready for offering and this Nishringananda he was the one to make the offering so they made three plates they made a plate for Lord Jagannath they made a plate for Lord Chaitanya and they made a plate for Lord Nishringadev so I put the three plates in front of the three deities and then Nishringananda sat down to meditate to make the offering 
And then in his meditation, he saw that Lord Chaitanya came. And he came and he ate. But he didn't just eat the plate for Lord Chaitanya, he ate the plate for Lord Jagannath and the plate for Lord Nasringadev. And there was no remnants also. After it was all, he, he ate everything. So Nasringananda was surprised that, wow, what is, and, and the, they were, the devotees asked Nasringananda, what's wrong? Why are you so worried? He said, oh, this, look at this Lord Chaitanya, but he has eaten everything. Lord Nasringadev and Lord Jagannath will have to fast. He ate all the plates. How could he do this? Actually, Lord Chaitanya wanted to show by this pastime that there's no difference between Lord Jagannath and Lord Nasringadev and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is, he was instructing Nasringananda in this point that there's no difference between these forms of the Lord. Anyway, Nisringananda was very, but he thought, just look at the behavior of this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Nisringadev and Lord Jagannath have to fast. He's eaten all the offerings. Shivananda became a bit confused. Shivananda couldn't understand is this because of his love, his ecstatic love for Krishna? Or did it really happen? Anyway, Nasringananda then cooked again. <laughs> he cooked again and offered again to Lord Nasringadev and Lord Jagannath. So that was one pastime where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Nasringananda Brahmachari. The other pastime where Lord Chaitanya appeared, the Avirbhav, it took place that Lord Chaitanya was supposed to go to Vrindavan. So he started from Pulia and he was going to Vrindavan. And Nasringananda is a great devotee, so he wants to decorate the road for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in his meditation, he, be, he began to decorate the road and he began to put jewels along the road, both sides of the road. He put jewels and then he had flowers, just like these flowers without any stem. And he would have flowers all along the road. And not only did he put jewels and flowers, but along the road at intervals, he made lakes. He made lakes with beautiful lotus flowers. And there were many nice birds there making sweet sounds and singing. Not only that, but Nasringananda also in his, this is all in his mind, you see, this is his mind and his, his meditation was like this. He was meditating on decorating the road that Lord Chaitanya is going to go to Vrindavan I want to decorate the road for him. You know, if, if you have a nice road, it's so much nicer, isn't it? If you have to go on a road, there is nothing, just dust and not very, not very pleasing. But he decorated it so nice. He had bakula flower trees, nice flowering trees, and then a nice, very cool wind, cool breeze also which carried the fragrance of the flowers. So it was very pleasing. So nice, so thoughtful. Nasringananda was thinking how to please Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, decorating the road for him. But at a certain point, he was decorating the road and he got to Kanai Natsala and then he said, I'm, I can't go any further. My meditation is stuck at Kanai Natsala. So Nishringa Brahmacha, Nishringananda Brahmachari told them, 
Lord Chaitanya is not going to go to Vrindavan. He's only going to go to Kanai Natsala. And from Kanai Natsala, he'll go back to Puri. And actually, that is what happened. That is what happened. The Lord went as far as Kanai Natsala. Nisringananda Brahmachari, he confirmed it by his own meditation. So it happened a year later, all the devotees had gone to Jagannath Puri and they were sitting with Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya told them, he said, you know, I'm always remembering those wonderful sweet meats and vegetable preparations which were made by Jagadananda and Nisringananda. When I came there and ate that offering, I had never tasted such wonderful delicacies. So when Shivananda heard that, he understood that it actually happened, that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually did appear there and he accepted their offering. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is the Supreme Lord and the Supreme Lord is Bhava Grahi. He accepts the sentiment of the devotee. The devotee offers something in their mind, it's as good as offering the thing. Just like you all know that well-known story which is there in the Nectar of Devotion, the Brahmana cooking the sweet rice. He was cooking the sweet rice. Of course, he was doing many other things to worship the Lord, but he cooked sweet rice. And at one point, you know, sweet rice shouldn't be too hot. Sweet rice should be cool. I remember we used to cook sweet rice. We, had, we used to have a very big program on Sundays in the New York temple. And we used to cook like 20 gallons of sweet rice for the Sunday feast. So we would cook it three days before and then we would put it in the freezer <laughs> so that when the Sunday feast came, you know, people could have some really nice cold sweet rice with their halava, with some very hot buttery halava. So, you know, that that Sunday feast was very successful. People really, really loved the prasadam. So the sweet rice shouldn't be too hot. So the brahmana wanted to offer the sweet rice. So he just put his little finger, you know, you don't taste it. Devotees, we don't taste before we offer. But he put his finger in just to see if it's hot or not. And he was surprised, he burned his finger. So that proves that what you do in your mind, that is also accepted by Lord Krishna. And Nasringananda, he was doing that, he was offering this wonderful road, the road to, he was decorating the road for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was appreciating this. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was manifesting himself to the devotees. So, remember we said Lord Chaitanya appeared in four different places. He appears in the home of Mother Sachi every day to taste her wonderful offerings, her preparations, her cooking. He appears in the home of Srivas Pandit Whenever there's kirtan, he appears in the home of Raghava Pandit and he appears also wherever Lord Nityananda is chanting and dancing. So this is the Avirbhav feature of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this way, we, we describe three features of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Shakshad, Avesha, and Avirbhav. And Shivananda is saying he got the benefit, he got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya in all three ways.
In all three ways he got that merit. He was directly seeing Lord Chaitanya, associating with him. He was also, he met Nakula, and Nakula was possessed by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he got the Avirbhav because Shivananda saying it was when Lord Chaitanya came, he was Narsinga Brahmachari brought him from he brought him from Panihati up to Shivananda Singh's house to take that prasadam when he offered to Lord Narsinga Dev and Lord Jagannath and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally came there and ate it. So this is a very special mercy which Shivananda Singh got that he saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in all three different features. Sakshat, directly, Avesha, empowered, and Avirbhav, through his appearance. So, Chivananda Sen has wonderful relationship with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cares so much about him. I was describing how Lord Nichananda, how he kicked Shivananda saying, and how did Lord Chaitanya how did, how It happened that when Shivananda Sen was kicked, there were two of his nephews who were with the party. And when they saw their uncle get kicked, they were very unhappy. They, didn't, they thought, oh Lord Nichananda should not have kicked him like that. He kicked our uncle. They felt very bad. And they left the party and they went ahead and they went all the way to Jagannath Puri to be with Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya could see that they were, they were disturbed. So Lord Chaitanya told his servant, give them prasadam, give them my remnants. And Lord Chaitanya said, every day, he said, every day give my remnants to Shivananda's family. They should get my remnants every day. This is how much caring Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had for his devotees. So we learn from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we learn from all of the devotees how to cultivate the qualities of a Vaishnava. Thank you very, very much. Srila Prabhupada ki. Shivananda Sen ki. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki. Gaur Premanande. Maharaj, one question is there. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Kushundar class. I mean, um, Sivananda Senior J. Kukur, Mahapur, Hate Pushat Pelin. Our personal Chaj, Kukuti Kiamon Show Hago Kurachil and J. Mahapur Kipalab Kote Palin. Ag number Ardun Maharaj is having two questions. One is that what fortune has got this dog, Sivananda's dog? That, uh, that Mahaprabhu's hand, the dog accepted the prasad. What fortune was there, the dogs? First question. Another question is? Uh, second question, the Nisinganandha Bhumachari, Tini Mahapur Parshat, Tini Manose Pattori Kochen, Atacho, Tini Punoray Avar Anna Kulyan, Jagannath Devesh Janne, Yaar Nisinganandha Devesh Bhagavan Janne. Eti Bhyap Mane Tatpar Joki. Uh, Nashingananda Brahmachari is so elevated, he can create a path for the Lord and he is aware about the Supreme Lord, but he has prepared that f food stuff for Nashingadev and Jagannath and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, separately, why he did like that? Two questions he asked. I didn't get the second question. Second question is that he is so elevated, he knew about that. Then he knew about that both gods are one. Why he has prepared separately and offered? Why he has to say? Uh -huh. Well, the dog certainly gets. Dogs can also be liberated 
it can also go back to Godhead. Or it may, it may be the dog gets the human birth. It may simply be that the dog next life will be, take birth as a devotee, will be elevated from the dog species to the human life and may take birth as a devotee. Or it may be that the soul from the dog can also go back to Godhead. Everything in association with the Lord is definitely benefited, very elevated. We don't know exactly what happens, but the, the mercy of the Lord is unlimited. And by the mercy of the Lord, even the dogs can go back to Godhead. Directly. So, as for Nishingananda Brahmachari, he, he didn't, you, you have a doubt that he, does, he doesn't know that Jagannath and Nishingadeva are the same as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Well, uh, Lord Chaitanya is confirming it to him in case there is some doubt. He's a devotee. Nishingananda was a devotee of Lord Nishingadeva. It was his worshipable deity. At the same time, he's also a great devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he's thinking maybe there's some difference between the two. He's thinking maybe they're not all just the same. But Lord Chaitanya was showing him actually there's no difference. So, what is, we could say maybe it's Leela also. Maybe it's just the Leela of the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arranged this sometimes. He puts his devotees into this illusion that they think like that for the sake of a pastime. The Leela Shakti can arrange these different things, that even the great devotees become bewildered about things like that. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj for the wonderful class. Maharaj, I have two doubts. One is, Lord Chaitanya appears in three ways, as you said, Sakshat, Avesh and Avirbhav. Lord Krishna also appears the same way. This is my question. And uh, second, my second doubt is, as uh, Lord Nityananda caused three sons of uh, Shivanand Sen to die, and what happened to them? They really died or...? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. For, well, the sons of Shivananda Sen, Lord Nityananda cursed them to die. Well, of course, ultimately we all die, right? We all take birth and die, but they didn't die immediately. I described they grew up to be wonderful devotees, right? One became uh, Chaitanya Das, he, he was a Sanskrit scholar and he wrote an important commentary on the Krishna Karanamrita and he also wrote a book called Chaitanya Charitamrita which is a Sanskrit poetry and then the youngest one Puri Das became Kavi Karnapurna, he wrote Gauraganesh Dipika and he wrote uh, Chaitanya Chandra Doya Nataka which is a drama, Sanskrit drama. So they became very great devotees because they were all blessed by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They got the remnants of Lord Chaitanya many times. They ate the remnants from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu many times. And oh, it, there's even a pastime, Lord Chaitanya took Puridas and he put his toe, he put, the toe he, he put his toe into the mouth of Puridas. So they really got a lot of mercy from Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Nityananda, he cursed, but it was not an effective curse, you know. It was just a, that, again, that's another Leela, Lord Chaitanya behaving like an ordinary man becoming hungry, becoming angry because of his hunger. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda is the Supreme Lord. He's not really hungry, but it, it was a lila to show the glory of his devotees and how they, re, how they respond, how they behave in these situations. Hare Krishna. Oh, Lord Krishna, does he also here in she, uh, yes, we could um, definitely, if Lord Chaitanya could do it, we can understand Lord Krishna can also do it, yes. We, Lord Krishna kind of, we don't, it's not described extensively that I know about, but certainly Lord Krishna could do it if he desires.
Thank you very much, Maharaj, for your wonderful class. Uh, we all uh, thank to uh, Maharaj by chanting three times Hari Bol. Hari Bol! Hari Bol! Hari Bol! And we expect that today, afternoon session starts sharp. 5.30. Sharp 5.30 will start. Please be on time and inspire your uh, colleagues, friends to be on time. Hare Krishna.